Rolling Stone just put out the most whack editorial I've ever seen written by a journalist on their website. The titled article is called Outrage Over Call of Duty LGBTQ Pride Brings Us Full Circle to Gamer Gate. You got that right. They are comparing the Nick Merckx bundle being removed from Call of Duty and the LGBTQ conversation that is involving around this whole situation to Gamergate, a situation where there was a lot of dishonest exchanges of favors between game developers that were female and gaming journalists. You know, we don't want to get into all that situation, but Gamergate is back according to Rolling Stone, because of this Nick Merckx situation. All right. Okay, groomer, is what I have to say in response to that. Rolling Stone, I don't subscribe to their website. I had a free article, so thank God I didn't have to pay for this trash of an opinion piece. But looking at their Twitter post, sharing this account real quick, they are getting kind of flamed in it as well. So I was like, all right. I have to read this. They're comparing it to Gamergate. We got to take a look at this nonsense. So real quick, of course, they got to say, oh, LGBTQ right wing boycott, because that's the thing that is in style. It's it's you have to try to trash right wingers no matter what. You're seeing people do it a lot more. They call right wingers grifters and they say that right wingers are hypocrites that need their safe spaces and this and that. And meanwhile, these people just act completely unhinged on the internet. Take a look at some of these comments. Let's look at the uh the tweets. You can see since when is leaving kids alone an anti LGBTQ thing? Now that's what I call a groomer and that's right. Uh, the original Nick Merckx tweet said, leave the kids alone. That's the real issue. And that is the real issue. That's the issue that I'm going to stand by. People could try to turn a blind eye and say that nobody's grooming kids and setting them up for situations that might lead into sexual connotations and situations that we don't want children being involved in. All right. It's their bodies. They are children. They don't know better. Oh, who are you to say that a kid that's five years old doesn't know about his sexuality? No, dude. <laughs> no. Anyways, continuing on, you can see 2023, they are pulling up Gamergate, established 2014, people who disagree, personal responsibility. <laughs> and you can say our expectations, our expectations for you were low, but holy fuck. Anyway, here's Gamergate. Of course, a yellow check mark. That's the go-to, guys. If you disagree, if you have an opinion that is different. Okay, groomer. Y'all realize Gamergate was journalists having sex relations with people whose products they were covering, right? Frogger of shame. If the Frogger of shame gets more likes than the original tweet, your tweet really sucks. So just, just to show you guys just a sample of what social media is saying before we get to the main entree right here so back to this article i i took a look at this i skimmed it briefly i'll be doing it again and i just i my eyes couldn't roll any more harder if they did they would fall right out of my eyes i can't believe there's people out there that are actually defending the concept of not leaving kids alone. Oh, Eric, it's not that. It's that we're LGBT. Per no, dude. The argument here is that Nick Merck's tweet had nothing to do with video games, had nothing to do with Call of Duty. It had an opinion over a California school district putting Pride Month into their curriculum calendar where they would acknowledge that it's Pride Month. They'd have activities catered towards this ideology that I personally feel and apparently several other people personally feel doesn't belong in school districts. Well, who's to say that it's just an elementary school? It's going to be district-wide, numbnuts. <laughs> district-wide. Now, continuing on, let's look at this. Let's, let's just begin. This is almost a decade ago. Video game culture helped give us rise to the anti-woke movement that continues to plague us today. So anti-woke movement, according to this article, is a plague why, why is calling out stuff that is uh, pushing narratives a plague? 
It's only okay to call stuff out if you don't agree with it, which when you think of the left side, it's anything that has to do with Christianity, anything that has to do with being white, anything that has to do with being straight. They hate that. You can't have anything. If you, if you want something straight or hetero, it's sexualization. It's only okay to talk about sex when it comes to LGBTQ type situations, right? It's not even about what a kid identifies at this point, honestly. It feels creepy going into this territory. It almost feels like they want to push sexual thoughts into children so that they could eventually start acting inappropriate with them. It's not about finding out how the kid feels about themselves. It's about pushing their mentality into a state of maturity that doesn't belong there yet. They have to develop. They have to go through puberty. They have to go... um, through development, cognitive stuff. They have to learn about things of life and nature and how things work. It's almost like they want to rush them to develop into young adults so they could have their ways with them. That's the creepy part of it, all right? So enough of me stalling here. So this says, <laughs> another day, another multi-dollar, multi-billion dollar corporate giant in the crosshairs of anti-woke right. This time is Activision Blizzard the fifth largest video game firm in the world that aggrieved reactionaries are threatening to boycott. And this goes on to talk about how it's talking about how the tweet, you can see the tweet saying um, that they should leave kids alone. And because of that, he got removed. We all know about this. Uh, It is this right here when they said, Hey, due to recent events, they tweeted that out uh, that, that caused the issue. That that they 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 they're the ones that basically made the situation. They escalated it because again, the Nick Merck situation was not Call of Duty related. It wasn't involving video games. They're the ones that pushed the situation into the world of gaming. That's that's why I'm even talking about it in the first place. That's that's even why streamers and and video game websites are even mentioning it because. Activision went out on their own and made a fucking statement that Nick Merck's bundle will no longer be in it and that they support LGBTQ and that they're focused on celebrating pride with their employees and community. Again, something that had to do with a issue on a school level was brought to the forefront because woke easy, wokeisms, wokies. I don't even I can't even talk right now. I'm tongue tied. Uh, Continuing on, though, this is where the article starts to get juicy right here. This is the same right wingers who have lately pounced on Bud Light, Disney, Target, Chick-fil-A for efforts at expanding diversity and inclusion, fired up the outrage machine to retaliate with gamers announcing their intent to quit Call of Duty forever. What's wrong with choosing to boycott something because it goes against what you believe or what you support? That's a choice in life. We do not have to support Something that we don't, regardless if it's a LGBTQ thing, whether it's a religion thing, whether it's anything political, you name it. We have the right to stand on our own ground to support what we do or don't. All right. You might feel that makes somebody a bigot. You might feel that makes somebody whatever. But who gives a fuck? All right. You're not going to tell people what they want to support or what they don't. In return, you could choose to fuck with that person or not. But you doing these witch hunts, putting labels like Gamergate and all this on top of it? No. Fuck off with that. All right? Fuck off with that. Now, continuing on, this is the outrage campaign that quickly took shape around the incident mocked Call of Duty as call groomers, alluding to the baseless homophobic and transphobic smear, which holds that any discussion of queerness and gender with children is a pretext for pedophiles to prey on them. While not particularly catchy, and despite Call of Duty only grooming kids for military recruitment, the slogan succeeded on Twitter to the delight of major anti-woke influencers. And yeah, call groomers has been trending. Now, is it fair to say everybody that is in the LGBT community are groomers? No, it's it's not. Just like it's not fair to say everybody that's a Republican is a white racist nationalist. All right. It goes both ways. You guys can't just be the only side that can claim who's a piece of shit or not or who's intolerant of what. All right. That's the fucking dilemma. That's where people get sick of the pitchforks. That's where people get sick of woke 
I guess, uh, woke culture, cancel culture. All right. Now, continuing on with this, this goes on to say, um, <laughs> this freaking out of shoot 'em up, popular shoot 'em up entertainment has somewhat been breached by liberal attitudes of acceptance. Is also a revealing throwback to the troll movement that opened the floodgates to such crusades almost a de- decade ago, Gamergate. In 2014 and 15, what a time to be alive. I miss those years, by the way. Male gamers waged relentless misogynistic harassment of women in the industry, using the excuse of a trumped-up media scandal to vent their fury at what they saw as progressive and feminist values in games. Targets were doxxed and threatened with rape and violence as these men lamented the supposed collapse of a purely masculine climate in these days. In those days, the woke crowd was maligned as an army of social justice warriors. And no, it, the reason why people are called social justice warriors is because of the pitchfork and because of the, the lengths that they go to to put this identity politics, to, to play this oppressed victim stuff, this complex. And, and don't act like you they were just innocent people as well. If, if they were getting docs, they were doing it too. It was all over the place. This was a insane time to be alive, especially on YouTube. If you were a YouTube content creator or if you followed people like Anita, Sarkeesian, and so forth, even Alpha Mega Sin. This whole idea of that it's the patriarchy and matriarchy attacking each other and coming over... It was mostly instigated by the social justice warriors being insane, blue-haired, colored people that would attack and scream and act essentially like Karens uh, any chance they would get. I mean, look at Anita, all right? Look at Anita. And and, and reading this article, you can see it. The, the vitriol is here as well. You see, of course, it follows the script of the past year's increasingly extreme anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. However, it echoes the old gamer gate na- uh, narrative a pastime regarded as dudish and heteronormative, resistant to any incursion of outsiders, now recognizes a diverse set of fans. You can no longer retreat into the sexless, murderous world of Call of Duty without risking the sight of a rainbow flag and get incredibly mad that gay people exist, even online on a virtual battlefield. Worse still, Activision welcomes those customers. So you can see this, this writer, this editorial, they're saying Activision welcomes these people that are homophobic and stuff didn't activision just stand up and delete a bundle saying that they are acknowledging pride with their employees and fan base so even even though activision went woke which i hope activision you guys see they're biting the hand that feeds you go woke it's never going to be good enough they're going to continue to pull the go post away from you until you completely eliminate anybody that is against this whole LGBTQ grooming narrative. These people don't want to live inclusive and have diversity. They want only their way. That that statement says it right there. That as long as Activision keeps allowing this base of gamer gators and, and masculine men that hate rainbows to play their game, they don't support it. That's essentially what they're saying right there. And, and that's where the problem is with always giving in to the woke side. Now, continuing on with this, you can see it's a useful case study in the projection that underlies the past decade of right-wing resentment. For all the times that side claims liberals and leftists need the coddle and comfort of safe spaces to operate in society, conservatives are the ones predictably incensed by the appearance of anyone else on the cultural territory they claim as their own. And then they give some stereotypes. Beer, big box stores, fast food, amusement parks, and naturally video games. The right feels threatened by the knowledge that they have no monopoly over these things and they threaten newcomers in kind. No. You're not threatening anything with that. Saying leave the children alone has nothing to do with Call of Duty and that's the fucking problem. People are outraged because Activision went out and made that statement when it had nothing to do with their fucking game. That's the fucking problem. And now they're trying to throw this as a Gamergate situation Rolling Stone you make me sick you make me absolutely sick 